what, a, what an amazing day. So I wonder, when did you first think, okay, I'm going to make a play all about Eminem's 2000 hit Stan. When, when did that come to you? <laughs> I, I gather my thoughts on that one. Um, well, no, you were talking it, to Jerry Cannon, apparently, when, when Jerry it came to... Jerry and I just met for a cup of coffee one morning, down in Royce. And uh, I just don't heard the idea came from. I said, it'd be great to do a one-man show. And Jerry being Jerry, he said, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do that. So I went off and I had ideas and I put them all down and wrote the whole thing and it was rubbish, <laughs> it just didn't work. <laughs> and right. So I went back to the drawing board and we did another sort of version of it and still didn't, it wasn't right. And then I said, okay, I have to do this properly. Yeah, yeah. So I got down to it, did it last year. Thank you, Thank you so much, Tommaso. Beautiful. And uh, we have it, it's done. Right. Written and edited and ready to go. It's in the whale on the 15th, 14th, 15th, 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 16th, 16th of October. No, I know no, November. That, oh, November, right? November. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I know that he, he, his partner Hardy died in 1957. Stan himself didn't die till 65. So he had quite a few years on his own. He did, yeah. And he was still. I, I listened to a lot of um, Gilbert Godfrey and others' podcasts. A lot of fans of his were stunned in LA to find that he's in the phone book. They could ring in him up. In the phone book, you could call him. And they go- could actually call him. And the great thing was you go to his house and he'd have like a, a chest always ready to go. Yeah. That he always felt like it wasn't over. He could still get a yeah. call and yeah. he had to go he and- He kept writing scripts for himself yeah. and Babe, who's dead. Um, um, but I think the, ba the basic tenant of the play is about that. It's right. about their relationship because he was a madman for getting married. He got married a lot of times. Okay. And loved all his wives and they all held him in very high regard, even after they divorced. Mm. But um, I think the love of his life was Babe, as everyone called yeah. him, Babe Ruzzoli. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I have, it's quite funny because although Babe is dead, yes. he's actually on stage of course. most of the time. Right. And this creates this lovely sort of confusion because Babe can talk to Stan, yeah. only Stan can hear him, the other cast members can't. So that plays nicely with that, there's yes, a little yes. interaction. But it also allows us to explore their lives a bit more in the past. And of course, that's the key for a lot of people. As much as he was, you know, his own individual, and, and as I said, he had many years on his own, he was much loved. Yeah. There's always going to be, you know, if you're part of the Rolling Stones or the Beatles or yeah. you're part of the Marx Brothers, Very good point. you'll always be part of the Marx Brothers or yes. part of... Yeah. Do you think that there was any negativity about Stan? Because I'm looking into him and I've always been a fan of, of both, you know, a lot of those sort of comedians of that era, but he just seemed particularly loved by everybody. I don't think he had a dark side. I think that's what attracted me, Paul, to him. He was such a lovely man. But you're, you're, and, so yet you're get, and yet you're getting Jerry Cannon to play him. That's that's a very <laughs> yeah, against that could type. Be a mistake, yeah. That is against type. I, there, yeah, there, I, I think. think we may have. Uh, that's going to that be a struggle badly. for him. It's going yeah, to be a struggle. To... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a much loved man. All he the way was a very it, much loved man, and yeah. it's interesting. We we people who may be a little bit older who remember the films. I mean, you can see the films on YouTube now. Sure. They're all there. Um, he kind of played this fool, this idiot, but he wasn't like that at all. In real mm. life, he was. He was, he was learned, the brains. he was, he the brains was very the well really. read, yeah. he didn't have much of a formal education, but he was very well read, yeah. highly intelligent, and yeah, a, a real man with humanity, that's what drew me to him, you know, right. he had a great humanity. Like yourself? Ah, Paul, yeah. like you, <laughs> spread the love around while we're at it, yes indeed, but no, yeah. he was, and that's what drew me to him as a character, he, he just had a wonderful sense of the world and life, and very aware of everything going on. Like if you think of when he was an older man, you had the height of the Cold War, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, you had the Kennedy assassination. They were, he was still alive for all that. Yeah, yeah. And they affected him, you know, he kind of thought, oh my, the country, well, he was English by birth, but he, right. his adopted country was the United States. It is that funny thing, a bit like there are certain iconic figures in this world, Mickey Mouse and, oh. and, 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 and certainly uh, uh, Lauren Hardy, people don't necessarily have their movies at home or, or don't even know their movies. They're just iconic figures. Yeah. They're almost silhouettes yeah. of a certain kind They're of- They're very much a brand. Of Indian time and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Do you think there's still an audience? Obviously, this is a story about a man who just happened to be in one of the biggest comedy duos of all time. Yeah. But I, I, I'm often curious if there is, if this generation go and find these people and go and find these, because Harold Lloyd's got a recent kind of resurgence. There was a wonderful Bogdanovich documentary. I always think, Lauren Hardy deserve a lot more, 
you know, credit for what they did. Well, there's a very good film made very recently with uh, Steve Coogan and Steve John Coogan C. Reilly. Yeah, and, and that was quite successful. I mean, it was true. Fun. And that true. really was just about them. On they went on after the films dried up. They went on these tours around the UK yes. and Ireland. In fact, they stayed in the Royal Marine here. In I have a picture of them outside Leary, of it. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite a little bit of local uh, news. Yeah, yeah. But. You know, he was just the consummate showman, and I think people who come to the play, I hope, I'm not being presumptuous, but I hope, it's, it's even if you didn't know him, you'll still get that this is an older man, he's mm. missing his partner in life, yeah. and, uh, you know, it, it's fun as well, you know. Yeah, well, the part of the kick would be, in some ways, you're introducing this man who is, you know, incredible, to those who may not be aware Absolutely. of, and I certainly wouldn't be aware of his life, Deeply Neither after was I, Lauren until Hardy, I did so, a bit of research. Yeah. You know? so, but an interesting footnote to that, um, Paul, is that, uh, and it's on record, Samuel Beckett, the esteemed Samuel Beckett of Waiting for Godot fame, yeah. was a huge fan of Sam, yeah. Oliver and Hardy and Stan Laurel. Right. And if you even look at, say, Waiting for Godot, well, you two tramps, they're in their bowler hats. Mm. Not, oh, yeah. There's a uh, yeah, see the link now. I'm not, yeah, no, I'm no, not comparing what I'm doing with Samuel had, Beckett. Beckett actually got. Buster Keaton of all people into one of his movies later That's on. Right. It wasn't a good movie, it was very arty, it was very, uh, you know, confusing, but there was definitely a love, he understood there was a genius involved in these particular, yeah. you know, yeah. comedians who could convey a huge yeah. amount yeah. through yeah. silence. You through... see, there's a question in the play and people, because there's, he's having a, he's doing a, he has a ghostwriter who's writing his biography. Right. I won't give too much away, but in that, the ghostwriter is a young woman and she says, what, why were you, what made you so successful? And he said, we represented, we didn't do slapstick. People think we did slapstick. We never mm. did slapstick. That was the Keystones cops. Yeah. We represented ordinary people. Right. We, were, we were down on our heel. We, we never had money. We were always trying to make the best of a bad lot. It always failed. Yeah. And that's what was so enduring about them, I think. You know? I'm not sure now, uh, you mentioned they came to Ireland, and, and maybe this is in the play or not, but I always, I, I, I had a very sad uh, teenage years, I actually read a biography of the two of them, and I was delighted to find that in Cove in September 1953, yeah. when they landed, that there was such a reception that the local church played, played Dance the, of the Cuckoos on the, the, on the, the, the bells. Absolutely. Which is, which is they fantastic. were blown away, they couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like amazing. the Beatles arriving on shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was almost like that. And I think he got a second wind from that. He sort of thought, Oh, we haven't been forgotten. Right. People know who we are. Yeah. Uh, and they were mobbed all around England. Like, they they were went around. Exotic over here. Maybe the people got used to them in the States. Yeah. And, yeah. and many people like Jimi Hendrix now would find a different audience over here. A yeah. much, much yeah. more appreciative audience. Yeah. So, Jerry, I don't know if you've spoken to Jerry, just how he gets to that point where he is an older man, you know, kind of living in that sort of blissful, hopefully, but was certainly that twilight era where he's, he's no longer on TV every day or on in the movies. I don't know if you've spoken to Jerry, how, how you approach it. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you. I, Beautiful. I think it's going to be yeah. down to the way I've written it. And then also, we've now got a really wonderful director, Mo O'Connell, on board. Great. And Mo really likes it. And I think she's going to bring her magic to it now in the sense of... Oh, she better. The, yeah, well, she will. I've all, oh, all every better. faith in her. But she will bring that yeah. pink pixie dust to it. And, and make it work in, yeah. in the sense of what's on the page, bring that to life. So I know you've written books, and, and I don't know, is this your first play? I don't know if this it is something, is, yeah. right? So was it, I don't know, was it daunting? Was it a, a kick and a half to say, well, this is a different it's sort medium? Of, it's sort of funny, because you haven't done it before, you kind of jump in. Now, I've always loved theatre, and I've always gone to theatre for years and years. So I, lo I love the medium, I love the way it's so immediate, and right. um, it's, it's, it's a lovely format. Like even a bad play is still can be a good night out. Right. Do you know that sort of way? But uh, and you have to deal with actors though. That's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. That's the only downside. WC Fields, remember? Yeah. Actors and animals. <laughs> <laughs> or children, was it children? And so as you correct it now, it's 14, 15, 16 November. We'll put the link up above and uh, you, we'll Paul. throw a few links to their shorts as well, just to give people a, a refresh yeah. on, on just how wonderful these guys were. They were great. And I just think for anyone... It's a very affectionate play. Yeah. And, for anyone and to, funny, it's very funny. For anyone to have contributed a huge amount to, to popular culture and then to find themselves slightly kind of off off the stage, oh, I think absolutely. there's such value in, 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 in giving them, you know, basically a, a pat on the back and saying, yeah. 
Yeah, you're, you're, you're amazing. You're a genius, and, yeah, and people were, should remember you. So I'm so fond of them both because I learned so much about them now reading biographies and such like, you know. Right. And it was a lovely journey writing the play as well. I got such a buzz out of that. It was great. It sounds like me. You're going to break into song. Are you going to break into song? Can you, can you do Dance of the Cuckoos? Or <laughs> I can't. I won't even try to do the Lonesome Pine in the Mountains of Virginia. That's one of their 